Yeah, yeah. It's J Mo, the very best reviews. Tell them none can contest. We gon' What's good, everybody? Welcome to the show. I uh, appreciate everybody for coming through. We're going to talk a little bit more about BMF uh, Season 2, Episode 3. I'm going to break down uh, a little bit more of what happened in that episode. So I uh, appreciate everybody for coming through. Um, a lot happened in Episode 3 from Meech getting shot by Lamar. He's back with a vengeance. We also uh, saw that Coach Cop was prepared to let him die right there. Um, we we saw a lot of other things like K-9 don't really have the grip on things that we thought because he ain't got his lady in check. She liked to go out on the side and get a little beauty eat. You know what I'm saying? He had to get that beauty eat. Uh, and so uh, she was definitely gone ahead to do that. And a lot of that stuff, you know, is coming back now on Meech because K-9 ended up having Meech go to handle that business. And he told him to bring back old boy that was getting that beauty eat on. And he told him to bring him back alive. And when he brought him back dead, it was a wrap. Now, K-9 was having Meech do it because he didn't want to be seen as ready to have beef over a female. So he tried to have Meech pretty much do the dirty work of bringing him here. But I do want to kill him myself, but I can't be seen as the one dragging him out, doing all this, that, and the other. It's a bad look for him. So what he did is told Meech to do it. But when Meech brought him back dead, K-9's anger and temper got the best of him again. And he told me, I ain't turning that water back on. You about to be dry balls for a while. And of course, me ain't like that. You didn't have me go and take somebody down and you still play me. This scene right here is foreshadowing of a future showdown between them two. I could definitely see Meech having to kill K-9 before this season is over. And we know it's a lot of similarities between power and BMF. And I wouldn't be surprised if the, the, the thing of killing somebody close to you or killing somebody you love or respect doesn't pop up again when he has to take out K-9. Now, I don't say he got a lot of love for him, but he definitely got a lot of respect. And when dude cut that off, meet Salty. And he had to go look for another plug, which was perfect for Coach Cop and B. Mickey. I still do not think B. Mickey going to set him up. He's going to figure out a way to get out of it and to not implicate Meech in the process. I still think B. Mickey's going to be dead before this season's over because I think that he's in a bad spot. He's really all alone inside. He can't really tell Meech what's going on at this point now because he's kind of gone too far down the road with Coach Cop. He can't really work with Coach Cop because Coach Cop probably only helping him as long as he can help Coach Cop. So with that being said, I think – he going to end up dead, man. He going to commit suicide. B. Mickey going to commit suicide. So, you know, I definitely think it's a wrap for him. He ain't going to be able to handle it. And, uh, you know, we going to go ahead and see what's up with that. Now, to Mr. Jones said, Charles is a clown like no other. Uh, uh I will say Charles makes some questionable choices but he ain't the worst i think that he has some some good reasons on why he's doing what he's doing he's making the bad choices sometimes but he got a good reason um and this his wife ain't giving him no nookie make you go crazy <laughs> 
Shout out to B. What's up, girl? TGIF. Reggie, what up, my brother Reggie M. D. Wee, what's up? Halima, what's good, sis? Nikki, what's up? Dame Dollar, what's good, brother? D. Weave, Snoop is a past is a complete joke. That is true. I think that is very funny as well. When I see Snoop, it makes me smile. Um, he tried to be the little smooth pimp Don Juan type pastor, it seemed like. But uh I think that uh that hair is what really does does it for me. Um I know Snoop got bur- dreads, not braids, but dreads, so I know he wasn't about to cut all his hair off for that role, but at the same time, what in the world is that? He got a back fro. <laughs> He's low in the front and big in the back. They should have just gave him a full fro. They should have just gave him a full fro. I know Snoop is balding in the front. Them them dreads start back here now. <laughs> they don't start in the front no more. They start in the back, but uh, in the middle. But they still, uh, I don't know, man. I think it's, it just would have been a little less distracting um, because that hair is hilarious. I, I can't even lie on that one. Let me see if I got it right here. Hey, he pulled up that damn fro. Woo, Charlie. Yeah, so, but while we talking about Snoop, what do you all think about Lucille putting a business in the streets? Put a one L if you think she was justified in talking to the pastor about their marital bed. Or put a two L if she was not justified in talking to the pastor about what go down in the marital bed. All right. I think, look at that back fro, boy. He got business in the front and a big ass party in the back. <laughs> That's a backyard party. That's a uh, house party in the back of that damn head he got. Back fro. <laughs> I think I need a backy out of me. Anyway, he got that back fro dripping. And I think that she wrong. I'm going to put a 2L. She wrong for putting that out there. If she did, I'll put it this way. So people do have counseling with pastors and things in the church so I've seen and heard and been told. Okay, so what I would say is that if that is something that she wanted to do, she should have talked to Charles first. And if he agreed that, okay, let's talk to, to Swift, slow Swift, <laughs> then, okay. But she did it without talking to him and woo, and uh and so then that's embarrassing caught him out, out off guard and he don't really hang with this man or know this man you didn't talk to him first so you find it easier to talk to this dude about y'all problems than talk to charles the man that you got the problem with you know so i put it this way she was out of line because she didn't talk to her husband first and they didn't agree let's do this so that's why she out of line you don't go putting your business in the streets and it doesn't matter what the title is and like charles said he on his third marriage how he trying to be saying this and saying that so with that being said, plus it looked like he he loves the support of the ladies in the congregation, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, baby, why don't you come and do a little Bible study with me? You know, we get on your knees. Yeah, perfect position for a lot of things like prayer. Yeah, step up to the pulpit, baby. I got a big shiny black microphone for you to speak your prayers into. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah man uh i think charles that right there might have been one of the final straws to make him be like man i'm done with lucille for a while and then when the other woman is coming shaking her you know what i'm saying tail feather 
<laughs> she come through shaking her tail feather. And, uh, you know, Charles like, oh, yeah. I ain't seen no duck butt in a minute, baby. Come on. Chuck it, duck it, clack, clack. Charles saw that booty moving. They like, Lucille, don't poke it out like that for me no more, baby. Hey, I'm going to fix more than that fan. Yeah, I'm going to fix that, them pipes. Yeah, they're going to be leaking. That's how I'm going to fix them, baby. I'm going to fix them. I'm going to make them leak all night long, baby. <laughs> Charles, man, he was sitting there trying not to look. He was trying to go ahead and fix the fan and get out of there. But ladies, boy, y'all know what to do when y'all want to do it. And uh, knowing Lucille, which is another thing that you shouldn't do, she probably telling her, because that's a friend that was at their house when Lucille smacked fire out of, out of little mama. I'm sure she probably told her, and me and Charles ain't been in the bed in a while. I, I just ain't been intimate with him. She like, what? I wish I had that big, strong man, Mr. Fleetwood Cadillac. Come on over here and pop my trunk, baby. You can change my oil any night, Charles. That's true. Well, hey, let's go for both sides. What you may be tired of and take for granted, another person would be wishing they had and could use what you tired of. That go for people, products, you know, whatever. You could have a car sitting there thinking it ain't worth nothing, might not even run. But it's somebody that would love to have that rust bucket and be tinkering and fixing and doing whatever with it every day. And to you, it ain't nothing. That woman, or that man, you thinking ain't this or that, is somebody that would love to be there and enjoy that person company. And look at her. She said, hey, hey. She done dipped that shoulder. Show the lay, show the lay. So Charles, he old school. He like, oh, shh. I ain't seen no shoulder in a minute, baby. God damn. That shoulder, what you put on that, baby oil? God damn, baby. That shoulder gleaming right there. Ooh, let me see your ankles. Oh, yeah. It's on, baby. Lucille who? <laughs> And so, you know, and then what people don't realize is sometimes when a person happier, they do better. So she over there nagging him all the time and making him miserable, which makes the whole house miserable because she's miserable. Then she make him miserable, which now everybody walking around miserable is hard to be motivated and want to go and get it and and do this and do that when you miserable. But now he got her and she about to start, you know what I'm saying, shaking that duck butt on him. He going to be having some pep in his step. He going to be happy. He going to have three, four cars in no time. He going to be riding all over the city. Dude, <laughs> he going to be driving a Bigfoot. <laughs> so, you know, hey, I definitely think that he going to be moving on from Lucille pretty soon. And I'm not going to say that he didn't make mistakes, but his mistakes are financial in the sense that he just not earning enough. It's not like he's messing up the money or blowing it on drugs. She's the one that manages the money and is messing up money and buying stuff. You know, I mean, it's not like he was a baller and then fell off and now she mad. This man was a working man his whole life. I mean, damn, she be on him like he was something uh, different or something when she met him. So I don't know, man. I think that she should have been trying to work in the car business too instead of still trying to work at Wendy's, but it is what it is. Maybe she don't drive or didn't whatever, believe in it. And a lot of times, and we've seen this in life, but on TV, they've been showing lately how when a man has a dream, a dream, I have a dream, and his woman is not supportive or believing in him in that dream, 
they normally are going to have a disconnect and a breakup. But if that woman was supportive in that dream, man, it probably would be nothing he wouldn't do. I mean, look what happened with Ghost and Tasha and Power. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, but, you know, Dame Kitty, you say, I wonder why Lucille's so frustrated. She's not speaking to Charles right. No, nah, she's not speaking to him right. And at the same time, she's giving him a hard time for not making enough money. He could be giving her a hard time. Like, what is you? You work at Wendy's. Like, you ain't balling. You ain't doing much your damn self. So you can't be coming at me all the time about being broke or I'm not doing it. What you, you don't do what you doing. So like, it ain't like she got a corporate job and she's, you know, dragging him along and he a bum on the couch. They on the same level. And I think that she's putting her frustrations of being on that level in life. And when she was with her mama saying, last episode none of her dreams worked out she's putting that on charles and blaming him in a way for that and that's not his fault you know so yeah it is what it is i think with uh dame say why the magazine's such a blow i think that's because she realized you can't you know punish him or keep him in check Either you're going to be there and do what you do, or this man is going to do what he's going to do. When women try to play the, the coochie game and, and turn off the water, it can only work for so long if you're doing weeks and months at a time. I mean, eventually he's going to end up doing something else. He used to do something else before he met you. So what you think? You never knew what to do until you came along? I mean, that's just not realistic. And so uh, it was unfortunate that she's put herself and him in that situation. But, you know, it is what it is. I don't think it's going to get any better. Moving on, I think that we did see a big change in Terry in this episode because I can't remember her name, but they knew third driver. What's her name? Y'all are let me know. I think he realized, okay, she a G. <laughs> she a G. She like, look, we need to get revenge. I love your father and all, but man, fork that. It's time to get revenge. I know how to do this and that. Bust the break lines, ba da da, split out. Nobody know. He's like, damn. Okay. So now I think that's like kind of opening up his mind to start to not judge a book by his cover. And also it's going to put him up on some different level of game. Uh, and I think he's escalated a beef with that touch of class and they're going to touch that. A. Uh, so I originally said that they were probably mob affiliated. At this point, we still do not know for sure if they are or are not. But he was kind of G when he walked up on Terry. Now, Terry, man, we got, I know I forget. I don't know about you guys, but I forget he's still a high school kid. So to be honest, if I was that dude in my 40s or 30s and some high school kid come up doing this, I probably would have walked up to him like, man, get your little ass out. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have beat him up maybe or whatever, but I probably wouldn't have taken him so serious being a high school kid and we grown running this business. Now, it may have been, well, it wasn't me. It was a mistake that he didn't take them serious because we saw that they came back. Now, I think if they would have left well enough alone with the one, you know, tire blowout with Terry in the beginning, I think they would have been, they would have left it as is where Terry came up there or whatever and they left it alone. But once they did go and mess up all their cars, <laughs> three cars, that's all they had. That right there, I think they didn't have a choice, and he did have to escalate. But 
I think in the end they're going to lose because they such a small shop, small organization. They came to take the hit of losing this the way that the bigger shop probably could. Um, and I think that if they burn down his shop or do something to that extent, hey, that's something they ain't going to probably recover from. And knowing them, they probably ain't got no dang on insurance. <laughs> All right, so uh, one of the things that we saw with Terry also is that he now is starting to go ahead and get a little ooh-la-la time. And uh, we saw that she took him out, and uh, he eating calamari. He ain't know about calamari, the boy, that calamari fried calamari. Get a little squid juice. <laughs> but... It's funny, a beautiful woman can get you to try a few things, a few seafood dishes, if you know what I mean. She can get you to sample all kind of seafood. You see it? It's food. Eat it. Lick it. Anyway. <laughs> Nicole, you say, but a touch of class was down with a mob. With the mob, they would not be paying nobody to do taxi service at the airport. Well, we don't know if they pay or don't pay, what they pay, or whatever the case, or if the dude is with them. But that's a good point. But the mob, they go by rules too. So if that was the rule, then they probably would probably pay, but they would probably want a lot for what they paid for probably or expect a lot more than what everybody else. I'm just guessing. But we don't know exactly that part yet. But I don't think they are with the mob as much as I thought at first. I will say that. I thought it could have been about an 80% chance that they were with the mob. Now I'm thinking it's about a 60% chance. Still more than 50. But not as much as I thought before. Now we see that Terry is eating that calamari. Sucking on that, uh, you know, fish sandwich is what he want to be doing. But he going to get the appetizer, the calamari, and he saw how she ate it. He like, okay, so that's how you want me to eat your fish meals. <laughs> so uh, definitely, I think that their relationship has gotten much closer. And we saw after she got popped in the eye. We saw Book dotted that eye. That's why they call him Book, because he dots eyes, crosses T's, <laughs> just like a book. Um, Terry, boy, he may kill Book for her. And she talking about she married and this and that, and he kissed her like that was the gone with the wind. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. Dame Dollar, that's, now this is a good point. I gave you credit for this one. Touch a class, if they would have mobbed, they probably would have killed them. After this, well, put it this way. They will probably kill them now after they messed up all their cars. Or hurt them real bad. So we'll see. They probably wouldn't have killed them just yet. He ain't really did nothing yet for that. But we'll see what their response is now. And that'll determine what I think if they the mob or not. I mean, we're going to find out now because after he tore up their cars and he made dude crash and they beat his ass. Yeah, that's we'll know right now next episode if they are the mob or not for sure. Because when you get your ass beat and you crash and they messed up all your fleet of cars, that's going to have a response. You're not going to say, just leave it alone. Forget it. I don't see that happening. So I'm interested to see what their response will be for Terry and them. Now, speaking of responses, we saw Donnell Rollins back, uh, the Undertaker Jr. And while he was uh, at work, I guess, it at the cemetery, at the mortuary, talking about, you don't look good, you look dead, you look dead, 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 but I'm going to make you look like this so the family can see you. Oh, baby, this is so good.
All right. Thanks for letting me know. The sound went out. <laughs> Sorry for the the moment where y'all couldn't hear. Uh, but thanks for letting me know in the comments the sound went out. Um, so we see that <laughs> I don't even know where I left off at. All right. But, um, yeah, I don't, like I say, I don't know where I left off. But Lamar, he's about to, you know, we know he went for revenge, like I said. I thought that Meech, you know, wouldn't have got shot that easy, but he thought Lamar was dead. Everybody didn't want to believe that he was alive, just like Cash Doll was saying uh to her daughter when she said she saw daddy she thought she was tweaking turned out they should have had the warning like pops from the barbershop because that man was back on the prowl and was not playing no games he was ready ready for revenge so i don't know man i'm wondering how meach is gonna get some payback on lamar after he didn't blasted him and one thing about Meech, I think that saved him was wearing that big rope because uh, that's why they probably showed the chain. So uh, as a close up on the floor broken because it looked like it got hit. The bullet hit the rope and that might have saved his life. So we'll see uh, what they say in the next episode on why he lived. <laughs> I will say that is a dope Christian Dior, uh, you know, hoodie or whatever. So that's what's up. But hold on, let me get some water. I'm I'm interested to see if they kill Lamar off in the show. I knew, and I'm not saying it like this or that, but I knew they couldn't have took him off the show from last season. He was really the star of the show. And so I was, you know, expecting him back. And now that he's back, I don't think he's going to make it past this season. I know in real life a lot of these people are alive, and even the character Lamar is based off of, the real person is still alive. I do think that it will be blood. <laughs> Shout out to Savannah Rivers, Amore, Rose. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat. First super chat of the night. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, spreading a little love. Appreciate it. Uh, definitely. You say I'm drinking on my gin. You know I got to have my gin and juice over here. My bottle almost empty over here. But. There we go. I've been having a whole lot going on this last week, or well, a couple weeks, and uh, it kind of delayed some of the things that I want to be doing with my show for the rest of the year and upcoming. And uh, I'm just uh, happy that I've been catching up on a lot of the things that I was trying to get done. I'm going to have a new place where I'll be doing some of my streams and uh new setup and things so i'm excited about that new workspace and uh some of the things i'll be able to do with that and uh share with people and things like that so definitely looking forward to that and i appreciate everybody for riding with me and uh going along helping me get to this point through all the years definitely definitely appreciate it all right encouraging warrior what's up girl you say you rocking with the vodka i know that's right don't don't get too much but go ahead and get loose <laughs> ill woods you say lamar is the canon of the show i know right uh he definitely is playing the role of canon in this show and power i think was not as good when 50 cent wasn't on the show Oh, brother. Now it's a damn 
problem with the camera. If it's not one thing, it's another. Now I'm using a different camera. See, that's why I'm looking forward to my new setup where I won't have these type of problems. Uh, let's see. So now my main camera is not working for some reason. All righty. Falling apart over here. <clears throat> All right. So as you can see, this camera is a little not as clear and uh, more close up. But anyway, we go keep the like they say, the show must go on. So let me ask y'all this. Um, and Dame, you brought this up. So I'll, I'll say this. How many of you all think that K9 and Meech will go and battle? You say K9 will blame Meech for Lamar becoming a problem from them. I agree, because that is Meech's beef. And that may be one of the reasons why I'm going to say what I say, which is I think that Lamar, I mean, not Lamar, K9 and Meech will go head to head. I know a lot of people have been saying that Lamar and K9 will go head to head, but I believe it's going to be Meech and K9 that's going to go head to head, and it's going to be something right there. I mean, we know Meech is going to come out the winner because we know the ending of the show. So I'm wondering how all of this take place. So I think that, uh, you know, Meech may have been expecting a little more. I'm looking at the wrong camera again. <laughs> Meech may be expecting maybe a little compassion or sympathy or something from K-9 after he gets shot. I'm not saying like him coming, bringing him some roses, but maybe giving him some leeway on the weight or maybe giving him some of the weight that he was looking for or something like that. And K-9 probably going to be like, no, I don't give a damn. You got shot. I ain't got nothing for you. And that's going to probably make Meech be like, okay, fork dude. You know, he don't give a damn if I'm shot or nothing. He just using me. And I think that that will start to make him look at K-9 in a different light as well. Like, you still trying to ride me hard and, and do this and that and play me after I didn't brought dude back. Yeah, he wasn't alive, but I still took out dude that was, you know, getting that beauty eat on with your girl. And you played me. I didn't got shot. You still won't turn that water on. I think that's going to be a problem. And I think that's what's going to help them to, to go at each other. <laughs> Looking like LL Cool J. I wish. I'm about a six pack short of a six pack. <laughs> Nikki. Nikki said Meech is going to have to kill him. I think so too, Nikki. I think that uh, Meech is going to be left with no choice. And K9, I think, is going to try to bully Meech in a way. And uh, I think Meech is going to realize dude don't really give a damn about him. And it's either him or me, it's like they say. And he'll probably get the, cl the, the plug from K-9. Because once they kill K-9, Meech will get the connection that K-9 had. And that will set him up to move all the way and, and become Big Meech. So that's what I'm thinking right there. So... Jocelyn, you say the LL lips <laughs> on point tonight. <laughs> I overdid it. Anyway, um, <laughs> you say he'll blame Meech, but that'll lead to K-9 versus Lamar. See, that's what everybody is saying, and I get it, but Lamar wouldn't be fighting for Meech. He don't give a damn. So I think it's going to be Meech versus K-9. Why would Lamar be fighting K-9 on Meech's behalf? He wouldn't. 
Now you could say maybe K9 want Lamar taken out because he's going to blame Lamar for maybe interruptions or this, that, and the other, possibly. But I think Meech is going to get most of the blame for all those interruptions because he don't know Lamar. And it is Meech beef and things, so he'll just probably say it's your fault. You better get him killed and handle it, or I'm going to handle you. If you dead, he won't be coming around no more. So maybe I might make it easy for him. That's the type of stuff I can see K-9 saying. So, you know, I definitely think Meech is going to be like, damn, dude has got no loyalty. So we'll see. I don't know if Lamar, I, I think the probability of Lamar versus K9 is much lower than Meach versus K9. So remember, y'all heard it here. And I got some things going where I'm trying to get back to doing the videos I used to do with the short recaps, and I hope to have been doing it already, but a couple of things didn't get set up and put in place like I have wanted to, and so it's coming. It's just taking a little bit longer than I hoped, maybe another week or two, but it will be back with my, you know, old school videos, so we'll see. Now, Nikki say K-9 is a sociopath, and so is Lamar. I agree, um, but I think because he's the sociopath that he is, he's not going to care about Lamar. He probably just sees Lamar as whoever that is disrupting this. They need to go or whoever they looking for need to go. And I think he's going to be you know, absent of sympathy or reason when it comes to why or who or this or that. He probably ain't going to care about all of that, which then put more pressure on Meech because he know this dude don't care. He's going to probably kill me if I don't get Lamar. And he probably ain't going to be able to get Lamar that easy because don't nobody know where he is or what he's doing and all of that. So I think it's going to end up being him and K9 gonna have to do it, so we'll see. All right. Um, what else do you all think uh may happen or you would like to see happen in this episode? I mean, in this future episodes and uh upcoming, because uh I'm more intrigued by headquarters partner headquarters new partner she kind of got layers like an onion and when she burnt that arm it probably smelled like one too it was real nasty stinky uh but uh she we now have learned is uh what from vietnam and uh has sympathy for the soldiers and her family was traumatized and they barely made it out. So now she's what a cop trying to help people that she was one of the people that needed help and, and got help from a GI, you GI, you help you GI. That was from platoon anyway. <laughs> so, um, but then she's doing self-harm and burning herself like a chicken leg. So I'm wondering what is really going on with gin and juice? Because it seems that she's like, what? Trying to clean up the city, trying to pay it forward, give back. But she'll run a Negro over and and then save his life at the same same week because Coach Cop was about to let Meech bleed out talking about show me your hands 
man, I hate when cops handcuff somebody that's been shot or make you lay on the ground when you bleeding out as if they still scared or something. The person that shot is the victim and they be saying, do this and do that as if the person's about to get up and shoot them or something. I mean, I guess anything can happen. I'm not a cop, <laughs> but good grief, man. They He should have been able to see that Meech was dying. I mean, I think he did see that. He just didn't care. <laughs> So maybe that's what that is with uh with Meech. Um, but you know, I'm wondering, and she's in Detroit. How did you end up in as a Detroit cop with her background? She's been through a lot, traveled a lot. <laughs> I'm wondering what is like she really went to a like Detroit cop? That's a real cop. That's Robocop. He was in Detroit. <laughs> so, you know, it was rough. It was the same time period, actually. So, you know, you needed Robocop to police Detroit back then. And uh, here she is running around trying to do this. I don't know if she crooked. Uh, I agree. She may have survivor's remorse. And, uh, mm. I'm wondering how it's all going to play out for her. You know, I just don't see her being the the bad cop anymore or working with internal affairs anymore. Um, but I'm still wondering, like, what? She really thinks she's going to clean up the city, huh? Beverly Hills cop. Right, you need a super cop over here, you know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. Uh, we definitely know, and I agree with you, Delina Griffin, Griffin, um, that he's a dirty cop. And I think that's why he is trying to do what he's doing. They both have, in a way, some type of remorse, survivor's remorse, because he know he was a dirty cop. And now his partner is dead. And it got something to do with some of the people that he was doing dirt with. And so now he got a hard on for Meech. He up here really trying to take Meech down. Got his little pecker poked out, ready to get him, ready to screw him. And that's a little bit of guilt. And I think survivor's remorse on him because he was in with him at first. He was getting that money. He was even giving a little info and receiving info. But he started to feel guilty about what was happening with people and in the community. And then when his partner got his head bust, that was it for him. But I think that she has probably something similar. And uh, I'm wondering if they we already saw he going to be on the case for 20 years. That's one thing uh, that I don't like is uh, showing the ending of stuff in the beginning. Um, some movies and some people tell the story that way. And then it's interesting to find out how it happened. But when you have a series and it's going so long, damn, I didn't like they showed that he was working on the case for 20 years. Um, I would have liked to have found that out and been surprised or something later at least. Or put that scene at the end of this season, at least. They really didn't have to show that scene at the beginning of this season when they got raided. They could have showed it at the end. So some of that stuff, if you just watch it for entertainment purposes, a lot of times, whatever. But then when I'm like doing the reviews and things, I don't like that it take away some of the fun out of speculation and theories and all of that. So um you know with that being said it is what it is savannah said he got a 20-year pension crooked pension <laughs> crooked officer crooked officer why you want to put me in a coffin sir? <laughs> damien kenny you say jen needs emotional connection to someone to stop hurting herself okay um possible 
I think that's probably why she's probably trying to help people in the community. And uh, when she brought that dude out smoking like a, you know, <laughs> poke chop, she uh, probably burned herself because she probably feel like she failed or not doing enough. And uh, sometimes when people feel like they didn't accomplish or do as much as they wanted, then they can have that guilt as well. So um, we'll see um, a little more. I'm interested to see how it play out. So um, let's see. What else did I want to talk about or miss? Oh, Cash Doll. Um, she looked different. I didn't realize it, but she had a baby from what um, everyone told me since uh, the last season. So congrats to her. Um, We see that when her daughter told her that, uh, you know, Lamar was dead, she didn't believe her. This is what I want to know, and I probably will not answer this. But why do they think Lamar is dead? Did they go to the funeral? Did they actually see the body and things? I mean, I guess they wouldn't go to the funeral. She could have went to the funeral because they got a child together. So, I mean, what? They didn't give him a funeral? (laughs) Just buried him in the box in the back of the cemetery? I mean, in the back of the prison? I mean, so I don't know, uh, but for some reason, everybody believes he's dead without actually, I guess, verifying it. Coach Cop could have got a body or something and put it in a casket maybe or something. I don't know, but I don't think that happened. So that's weird to me. Um, Nikki, you say, I think they think he's dead because Meech said he's dead. I think you're right. I agree with you, but I'm wondering why they just take his word for it and not, I don't know. Let me ask you ladies this. You could put a 1K if you was cash doll and Lamar died, put a 1K if you would have went to the funeral with the daughter. Put a 2K if you wouldn't have went to the funeral. And uh, I don't know. Should they? I think that she should have went to a funeral. I mean, that's her daughter's father. Yeah, he was crazy, this and that, but... (laughs) It is what it is. That's a good point, Nika. Uh, Probably thought he was unclaimed like Kato. I forgot about that um, in the moment, and you just reminded me, and I appreciate that, sis. That's a great point. Could be unclaimed in the hot box. Who they going to put over there in the hot box? You been in the whole damn day in the hot box. To put her in the hot box. All right, who know what I'm talking about when I said the hot box? <laughs> She's been in there all damn day. Well, what she do? She didn't run off. She didn't run off. Well, well, how long she gonna be in the hot box? All damn day. <laughs> so I don't know. Um, now Savannah says is that baby Meech? The baby is Meech's, I believe. But that uh, girl is not. But was she babysitting his baby or they got a baby together? I don't think they got a baby together. Because they ain't been, Lamar ain't been gone for nine months. I don't know. Look, how long did they say in the first episode he been having Lamar? Like that, I thought it said a few weeks. Um, definitely not nine months. So, I'm not sure. 
Okay, so, oh, yeah. Damn, Nikki, you on it tonight, sis. I appreciate it. I forgot. So they wasn't sure, remember, in season one, if he was the biological father or not, or she told him that that's not your real daughter, but he raised her, and she do call him daddy. So now that's an even better question for the ladies. So that's not the real father, Lamar. But he was there, and she allowed her daughter to call him daddy. And that's the only man that we know of that the daughter sees as daddy. But he's not the dad, and he got issues. If you thought he was dead, would you go to the funeral? Put a 1K if you would. Put a 2K if you wouldn't. Y'all got it in the hot box. Django, you uppity son of a bitch. Monsieur Candy. Monsieur Candy. That's right. That's right. That's right. The Django. You, you. They keep trying to cut off my mic with the Django. <laughs> Been there all damn day. So, yeah, you say, Miss Jocelyn, how about them cowboys? She say, Cash Doll should have been looking for his stash money to help support her child. That's true. Now, once she got it, she better move. Because if he come back and she has spent that money, you know he crazy. So, but she should have got that money and got out of there for all the drama and trouble that he caused. I, I would say she entitled to a little extra something to get out of there. So, what's up, Encouraging Warrior? Thank you so much for the support and uh coming through with the super chat you said jay i cried when i saw the crackhead babysitter doing that mess in front of her child being that i'm an 80s baby it really hit me hard because my family was affected by the crack epidemic well, i'm sorry that your family was affected by that and uh unfortunately a lot of families during that time was hit hard and, uh, you know, the powers that be treated everybody like criminals, unlike the opioid epidemic that recently happened. Um, but that was a very powerful and sad and unfortunate scene when Meech came across his ex-babysitter that turned out to be on crack now. And... She couldn't even care. She she was doing it in front of her daughter, but she made a great point when she said to Meech, you just as addicted as I am. This is one of the camera views and cinematography angles that I did like. It kind of looked like uh, the movie Doom <laughs> and uh, how they had it zoomed in on Meech in the first person perspective uh, when he was going through there. That was kind of cool. Um, and then when he came across her, um, I was just sad, um, trying to, I guess, protect herself with what a butter knife, a box cutter. And, uh, I mean, that really kind of did something to Meech in a way because he knew who she was. And he knew that his business and life choices had an effect on what, how she was living. And even he knew you up here living foul in front of your little girl. That's a horrible example. And at the end of the day, what's so sad is that she was right and proved herself right when she said, you just as addicted as me. Because what did he do? He brought her the stuff. He may have gave a little happy meal, but he fed into it and left. He didn't like decide to get out the game and 
take her to rehab or something like that. He kept doing what he do, and she got it and started doing what she do. And in the end, they was both stuck in the same situation, addicted to the same life. And, uh, you know, that was real messed up because they both still young. I mean, it wasn't like she was an old woman and she got a little girl and that the crack epidemic in the 80s and early 90s, it really ravaged a lot of families, communities. It was just really, really bad, really sad. So, you know, um, just unfortunate, you know, that that happened. Miss Jocelyn, thank you so much for, you know, being sweet. And I appreciate the support. And Cash App is J Moore Reviews. Just put the cash dollar sign. And as well as PayPal and all of that stuff. I keep everything the same. J Moore Reviews. So whether it's PayPal, Cash App, whatever the case, I try to keep everything uniform. But thank you, Miss Jocelyn. Appreciate it. Uh, definitely helping to keep the lights on and the mic on. <laughs> um, and yeah, that's part of what he's addicted to, the money and the lifestyle. He's not a physically addicted to the drug, but he's physically addicted to what the drug brings him. Whereas all the drug brings her is the high. And that's what she's addicted to. He's addicted to the high the drug money it was bringing him and uh he, he can't stop i think he's still addicted and wants that to this day i think he really is proud of his big meets days and what they did and and things and uh i think if he could get out now he'd be partying and doing all the same stuff he just wouldn't probably be selling drugs so I don't see him, you know, really changed at all. He still want that money, the fame, the notoriety, all of that. So anyway, better ready to wrap it up. I appreciate everybody for coming through. Oh, one thing I did want to say, uh, I almost forgot, is I think Lucille is about to start and miss jocelyn i just got the cash app thank you so much um i appreciate it thank you very much um what i was gonna say is i think lucille about to start giving uh pastor swift a little extra bible study very soon now i know that ain't a uh breaking uh you know theory but i think it's really gonna happen soon one of the oldest tricks that people do is when you tell your business to people and about your relationships, if you tell it to the wrong person who may want that person or you, they will use that information in your situation against you so that they can have you. And, uh, and, uh, yes, I definitely think that that's what he's going to do. Miss Jocelyn, it's your birthday. Yes, I did get the super chat, and I wish I could give you something. So here, I'm going to do a little something for you for your birthday. I'm going to do a little dance. Here we go. Woo! Hey! Let's get it, girl. Uh, uh, uh. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. You all been great and supportive as always. I will be back Sunday with Godfather of Harlem, The Last of Us. We got your honor. I'm, it's a lot and I'm loving it. Everybody, y'all have a good weekend. I'm up out of here. Y'all be safe. Deuces. I'm out.